Okay, so I just got back from taking a load of hay and bringing a load of compost in. Timothy cleaned this all up with the pressure washer so that it's not so obnoxious to deal with. Uh, there's a few things that do need to be done with this tractor after we get the cab off besides the uh, transmission coming out. As you can see, that's oil that came out from this thing. Uh, the reason that oil is out of this thing is because of this miserable hose right here. This hose right here, it is shot. I've replaced the O-ring several times thinking that it was the O-ring because it looks like it's coming out of there, but it's not. It's coming out of the from the hose and the compression collar, so that has to be replaced uh, when I do that. But we can't really do a hell of a lot until we get that cab up. Uh, I was watching Warren of Western Truck and Tractor, and Warren did a very similar tractor. It was a 7320, I believe, or 7330. Uh, basically the same transmission design, different transmission, but a different transmission, same transmission design as an IVT transmission. Uh, I watched part two as he lifted the cab off and he used his truck. So if he used his truck, I'm pretty sure I can use this, the rafters, without any problem. I'm not really too concerned. I do have some boards up there that I can use, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use those big pieces right there and the two of them. We're gonna put them together so I have double the strength, but I'm gonna put them up there first, and then uh, we'll get going on that. And I'm gonna move the thing back here about as far as I can. So I'm thinking right there between that light and that light, that'll give us enough room to roll it forward and enough room to come in from that side there with the skid steer to pick up the transmission. So instead of all the happy horse shit that I've been doing, let's say we, uh, Let's start the process, Tim. You ready to rip apart the 6210R John Deere tractor? Yeah. Let's get this IVT out of here. He's got the table all cleaned off and ready to go. Because uh, what we are gonna do, the one thing that Warren did say was that he tears his apart just to find out what was wrong with it so he doesn't spend over $30,000 on a transmission just to put it in and have still have the same problem because he couldn't get the parts. I have an outlet for the parts and Warren, if you're watching, I know you do watch from time to time, but Warren, if you're watching, um, give, contact me through email, onelonelyfarmer at yahoo.com, and I will tell you exactly how and where to get those parts so you can save your farmers a boatload of money and make a little more on, on the side yourself.
doing is we're making a uh, lifting bar to lift that cab off there. I've got longer bolts that'll fit down through there. Timothy's cutting them right now. If he doesn't break his wrist. Here, I'll hold this. You go ahead and break your wrist again. Two hands. Okay. So now we gotta find dead center of 56. What's half of 56? 25 and a half. Yes. No. Uh, <laughs> half of 56. So uh, 25 and 25 is 50. So it would be. Yeah, you need three and three. So eight, 28 and 28. No? No, that won't work. Five, six, seven, eight is three. And then 28 is three more it would be six. So it would be 28, right? What'd I do with this tape measure? What happened to the tape measure? Did I put it away? Oh, hey, you just about hit me. Eight and eight, 16. 28. 18. No, that's just 36. 56, 28, guarantee it, 28 would be right here, right? And then we can check our math pretty simply. And ow, the reason I'm doing that that way is because I need to find dead center. What do I do with my, you know, I can buy miles of soapstone and it all gets lost. Anyway, so we put that thing right dead center there and we go here to 28. So. The theme to this is, hey, don't touch that. The theme to this is, did I do it right or did I do it right? Thank you. <laughs> All right, so now I got to weld something to that to make it a hook that I can grab with the other who's and what's it. So basically just all I need is a loop, just a, a, a piece of steel. That's all. Huh? A ring? Nah, that's a logging ring. We don't want to use that. That's old. I used to use that a lot. Well, I'll find something around here. Has it moved? It's moving. It's free. Huh? It's free. No. So, all right, <laughs> after almost bringing the building down, uh, I had to reinforce the rafters. As you can see, there's like four boards there, and now there's three boards over there. So we've got enough rafter to hold the whole damn thing up. Um, this is a pain in the neck. Now, I'm not 100% sure how to do this, whether these wires come down from up above here, which I got a sneaking feeling that they do, but I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna have to figure this out because these wires that come out of the cab, they can't stay in the cab and they can't go up with the cab. Uh, they go with the tractor, but if I disconnect it from there, then I've got to have then I've got all this apparatus from here, which goes around to the back. So it has to come out of this cab. So I'm gonna have to uh, I'm gonna have to take this apart, this plastic here. I'm sure it's not the end of the world to do that, but it may snap in place. It may be bolted in place. I'm not 100% sure. But don't you just love it that John Deere builds these things with windshield washer fluid, right? Windshield washer fluid. I love the fact that they have windshield washer fluid in them. Like lots of it. But when you disconnect the hoses to go take your cab off, this is what you get. A mess. And uh, I can't seem to find it. I couldn't seem to find anything to catch it with. So it's just going to have to evaporate off into the atmosphere like it would normally do. So I'm either going to take this box apart. Oh wait, that's it. 
That's it. This comes apart. There it is. Okay, so all these wires that are here that go into here, I think they just get disconnected. Maybe there too. I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> oh, I love being in the I don't know world. Um, some of this stuff is just in here for the fun of it. So, this is just a fuse box, this is. But, and they do come out of there somehow. I think there's just a simple little little gizmo here, maybe. Let me go get a screwdriver. Let me blow that out of there real quick. Okay, so before the world comes to an end, I might as well just start talking about it. Uh, these hoses here, these all attach to the front of the cab up in there. Um, pretty much made up my mind that I'm going to take the hoses off down here, okay? So I'm either going to take them, well, maybe I take them off right there. There's a, there's a port there. There's a port there that I could take them off at. Uh, not sure whether it's easier up there or down here. One way or the other, they're coming off. Probably up there, because then the hoses, I can drape them over. But I do have a concern here, and it's with these wires that come out of the cab, because that's very important. Uh, those wires there run up to all the computer and the controls. And I'm, I'm not 100% sure whether I gotta pull it out there or whether I gotta fish around in this thing and get that all taken care of. But before I do that, I'm gonna have to take those hoses off. And I'll do that. There's a, the body for the, the valve body for the, oh, excuse me there. Valve body for the loader is there, which has a leak in it. I have to figure that one out before we put it all together. Anyway, uh, but we do have it raised up. Obviously, it's raised up. Tim has drained the, oh, the coolant out of it. You can get a better look under here as to what you can see the heating and cooling wire hoses are there um not thrilled about what i'm gonna have to do to that but i do have to do it anyway i gotta drain that we've drained the coolant i just or the yeah the coolant but i have to drain the the r134a and cap those lines and i think we'll be okay there Ooh. so yeah no big deal uh, we're almost there i took the this cable here is to release the park to roll the tractor out from underneath there. So when I do get all those hoses, wires, and lines all done, um, I will be able to just go over there with a, an adjustable wrench, pull it forward or a piece of pipe or something, put it on that thing, pull it forward, disconnect the drive line has to come off, the front drive. I have to drop that and then roll everything out from underneath the cab. Then I'm gonna set the cab down onto blocks of wood and hopefully it holds together and doesn't come crash into the ground with anybody underneath it. Right, Tim? Okay, so there's the beginnings of it. Tomorrow we should have the cab off and that transmission out. No big deal, right, Tim? Yep. And tomorrow's Saturday. I do have to go get a load of lime tomorrow morning if I can get up. So I'll see you later.